Hello again. We are back at it with building a portfolio in Folio. I'm not going to lie, creating a portfolio in Folio is not the most intuitive. There is an explanation behind why it was designed the way it is. In a sense, it may seem that Folio is forcing you to talk and write about your work before uploading it, which is a really good exercise that can come in handy later when you're applying for a grant, a job, or to showcase your work. In journaling, you will have a record of your thoughts and or a beginning point for these applications. There is nothing stopping you from not journaling and just using this space as a place to upload your work. We highly recommend that you do write about your projects and experiences, however, and tag them so that you are able to find them easier in the future and also allow others to collaborate with you. Here is Ahiko, another folio artist. Hi, my name is Ehiko Odie, also known as Ehiko, also known as Ehiko Studio. I am a multidisciplinary artist who just graduated from Okada University. I am 22 years old and my art is centered around a lot of things. It's centered around um, healing and growing. It's centered around blackness, black hair, black spirit, black energy. It's centered around African masks and spirituality linked to African masks. And actually I specialize more in making and drawing and sketching African masks and you know, the power that just comes and flows through them and the different expressions that they make and I'm also into a lot of textiles and into a lot of painting and installation pieces as well. I just feel like art is and should be expressed in so many different forms and ways and the possibilities are just endless in making arts in different mediums. Having a portfolio is extremely important. It's very important because you get to see like a documentation and the history of your work and the amount of love you put into making each and every piece. I feel like it's just so it's 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 like showing the amount of respect you have for your practice, for yourself, for your works. It's it's everything. You need to have a portfolio. You need to be able to look back at your work and see what you've done. And that is from the process, to the idea, to the outcome, to the finished piece, to everything. You need to see that. You need to have that to, you know, inspire you, inspire your future creations, inspire your future self. Here are the steps to creating a portfolio in Folio. Step one, create a journal and upload documentation. This can be in progress works and or final outputs. Or open a journal that you've already created that relates to the work you want to upload. As seen in the journaling and goal mapping video, uploading your imagery in journals is relatively easy. Load them here and don't forget to save. Step two, Go to the portfolio and create a portfolio. In portfolio, create a new folder here. Name your portfolio and include a brief summary description, like a series artist statement to give potential viewers context about the work. Here you can include information about the materials used, what inspired the work, what your intentions are, and any relevant symbolism that might not be obvious. You will need to add at least one series like this. If you want this body of work to have more than one series, create more. You will be able to sort all your media once it's uploaded. Now, go back to the journal where you uploaded your work. Click on the thumbnail boxes and sort them into the portfolio you desire, like this. Step four, 
Go back to the portfolio and organize your work as you would like using these arrows. To enter all individual work titles and descriptions, press Save, click the portfolio's images, and type the labels. More and more artists are including image descriptions of their work for accessibility reasons. Visual descriptions offer textual and essential information about visual content, such as artwork image file types, JPEGs, NPG files, MP3, MP4, and GIFs. They describe imagery and or video content, including colors, styles, subject matter, and actions that are significant. Image descriptions also allow content to be presented to viewers in a variety of ways, including auditory recitations, visual text, and any other format that is best geared to the audience of your gallery. Some people like to first describe the object, then the action, then the context. A tip is to avoid redundant or repetitive words to make your description as clear as possible. Fundamentals of documenting your work. Documenting your work is extremely valuable. It's a practice that many artists are not used to. We store a lot of information in our heads that sometimes gets buried and forgotten. Having both a written and visual record of our process might give us a little bit more confidence in what we're creating. This does not mean that we get rid of our sketchbooks. Rather, maybe we take a picture of those thoughts and images too. When taking photos of your works in progress, try to remember to take photos all the way through, not just at the beginning and at the end. Photograph action shots too. You may want to capture images of materials you used for visual reference, articles you've read, people who've inspired you. This could literally be a visual journal of your creative journey. All images should be evenly lit with no dark shadows or reflections obscuring the art. Work that is framed should be photographed either outside of the frame or with the glass taken out. Using a white or neutral background enables your artwork to be the primary focus of the photo. You can look up how to photograph your final works online if you have access to a lighting kit and a good digital camera. There are many resources available. Taking photos outside on a bright day will do in a pinch. Make sure photos are taken head on, not on an angle, either with a very steady hand, a tripod, or lean your camera phone on a surface. And also, at a bit of a distance. Images should all be between 72 and 150 dpi for the internet, PNG files or JPEG files. If you want to print your images, they should be at least 300 dpi. You won't be able to upload such a large file onto Folio, however. If you're looking for feedback or support in documenting your artwork or taking headshots, you can reach out to mentors at Sketch with this skill. This is a great opportunity to check out mentor profiles and reach out. Many mentors can help you take photos and video, edit them, and then prep them for online upload. It's really amazing, you know, you get to have your arts on a platform where different mentors can see it before it's being revealed to the public and it's really nice especially in these times to have that because you're able to get feedback on your work from people who are already in the art industry so just not your friends and your peers but people who also know what they're talking about and really critique you on how you can improve your work not just say you know it's perfect all the time so the portfolio and folio works for me pretty good. Um, the first few times, not a few times, but the first time I tried um, using folio, it wasn't that um, direct, but muscle memory, you just remember what to do. Yeah, I think we're done. Give thanks.